Hey everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby. We have a very, very special in-studio guest. All the way from New York City, it is lifestyle photographer Eric Fallon. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks now, how many times? Back. Third time on The Grid? Third or fourth? It's, you get a jacket when happening. you get to five times. It's, it's like uh, Saturday Night Live. You get to the fifth one. We get you a jacket, but nice. it's not a nice one. Or the anyway, Masters, like. hey, we're really <laughs> like it's a green jacket, yeah, like the yeah. Masters. Really glad to have you here. What have you been up to? Um, shooting. Uh, I'm in New York now. Been there for a couple of years. Uh, assignment work's been really great. And that yeah, I follow you. You know, on Instagram, you're just very good. Oh, thank you. I thank mean, you. you know that, but I mean, just saying. <laughs> for those of you out there, if you're not following him on Instagram, go follow him on Instagram. It is Eric V Photo. E R K V Photo on Instagram. He always mm -hmm. posts cool stuff. And every time you look at his stuff, you go. He's living a much cooler life than I am. <laughs> it's pretty much one of those, you know, where it's like, oh, crap, you know. It's like I'm sitting in a meeting, and Eric's like, I'm on location hanging out of the helicopter. You know, it's like everything's like bullets were flying. It was amazing, you know. We're like, uh, well, that's, that's the cop-out. If you have a lifestyle photographer, you get to pick it. And I was like, well, I'm just going to be this kind of lifestyle photographer this week. And yes, he vacation. is. It's vacation. All right. Well, we are very glad to have you here. We have uh, asked our viewers to submit images. Uh, we did not get to do a Blind Critique episode in, in uh, March. I don't know how that happened, but it just it, we just didn't get to do it. So this is our first one in like six weeks. Okay. And so it's exciting. Uh, we asked because Eric is a portrait photographer, we asked you to submit just portraits. They don't have to be lifestyle portraits, just like send us photos of people. Yeah, just put so people in the pictures, put please. People, people. Last time it was like landscapes and landscapes oh, and a dog me. and more landscapes. Even though we said just submit people, peop we had people submit dogs and landscapes and everything else. Doesn't matter. We have plenty. We have more than we'll be able to get through on the show. Good. So here's, uh, for those of you who are new and it's the first time watching, so here's what we do. Uh, we we call them blind photo critiques because we're just we don't we can't see very well. No, we call them blind photo critiques because we don't mention your name on the air. The reason we don't want to mention your name now, of course, if you put a big watermark, we know your oh, name. Oh, you're asking for it with a big you're watermark, anyways. But the reason we don't ask your name is because we want to be able to be truthful, and because nobody else it, ever in your entire life will be truthful with you about your photography. <laughs> nobody will ever say, you know, your stuff isn't very good. You know, your spouse isn't going to say it. Your friends aren't going to say it. Mom. Your coworkers, no one's ever going to say, you know, your stuff just kind of sucks. But we don't want to just say your stuff sucks. We want to say your stuff really sucks. No. What we want to do is tell you how you can get better. Like things that we see that might be able, like tips or techniques that might uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Stephanie says, does anyone else think Eric looks like a techno Viking? Oh, God. So if, if you guys, if, you're, if you don't know the History Channel TV show, The Vikings, I mean, it's an incredible original series, but Ragnar was my hair inspiration. And I live in New York. It snowed last week, so I, I can, come on. You're there. Yeah. You're so there. You're so there, you're not there. Anyway, uh, we have a bunch of your images. We're going to launch right into them. Uh, now, I want to warn Eric about something. Eric, on this show, it has been a tradition <laughs> to spend 25 minutes on the first set okay. and then rush through everything else. Okay. But you and I could be the first pair of, of guests that actually we get through it like in a minute or two. Okay. And because that way we can spend more time on all of them, but we, we like hyper analyze the first one. We're gonna try not to do that today. We're gonna have a no timer. There's gonna be an off-camera timer like TikTok. tock yeah, yeah, someone will on the set will just yell at us. Start flagging one. All right. So we're going to take a look at our first round here. We're going to go through all of the images first, and then we'll kind of go back and look. All right. And let me make sure. There we go. All right. So here's uh, one of our first images. And I'm just going to quickly go through them, Eric, and then we'll, we'll get your comments here. All righty. Okay. Uh, overall, all thoughts here. Um. Overall, on this photo, okay. Well, so. no, you can you can comment on the photographer as a whole, like the, their body of work, which is these five pictures. Yeah. Or okay. you can say, you know, photo by photo. So first off, I like that it actually looks like a body of work because it's all children. Um, so that speaks to your subject matter. Maybe you only photograph kids. Maybe these are your kids. But I like that you submitted a cohesive body because it is all kids at least. Um, if I had to give a critique on this very first photo, I would say that when you go into Lightroom and they have those presets for the split toning and all that, mm -hmm. those are like starting points that we pray you all scale back. This looks like someone might have gone in there and clicked one of the split tone presets yep. and just left it at 100%. Um, I, th I look at presets more of like a way to jumpstart your creativity than a finished recipe. Um, so I would say maybe this one stands out to me as a little over -prop 
processed, overbaked, too much saturation, too much contrast. Um, it doesn't do the photo necessarily justice, but it also doesn't fit the other images submitted. All right, here's the thing. This was my favorite one, so this isn't gonna go well for me here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's good, I like the expression here. I mean, kids are, the great thing about photographing kids is they are very expressive. You know, their, their souls haven't been crushed by adulthood just yet, <laughs> yeah. so. It's coming. Still smiling. Give them a few hundred username and passwords in their head and they'll, they'll be as bitter as the rest mm -hmm. of us. There you go, well here's our moody. We just crushed the kid's soul. We went black and white and moody here. But that, I like that, it's, it's, it's a good use of the black and white here because it's more of a contemplative shot. I love that, that's just a great moment. Let's go. This I, I love. Like yeah. this is this lens. This becomes more of the lifestyle round uh, round that I or like genre that I really like. Um, again, it looks like we may have gone into like Visco Cam or VSCR or whatever yeah, that and is. Yeah, hit a preset and hit a preset and, and went. This is a very popular fade that you're seeing nowadays. Um, this is my favorite image of the group, honestly. Yeah, you know what? And I mean, I, I still do like the first one, but you know what would fix this one for me? <laughs> Under his hand. Uh, on spot. the brights is that big bright spot and that's easy enough to fix in camera raw or wherever else you like I, I think that would help this image a lot uh, I do I like the action and it's kind of cute of course I mean we, on on your small screen if you're watching on a mobile device I'm not sure you can see but his eyes are actually you can see them pretty well oh, yeah. on, at, at full size but that's really it's like your eyes being drawn down to nothing. There's nothing on that ground. It's just snow with no detail or anything. If you could darken that up a little bit, if only there was a program go. that would let you do that. Let's grab the adjustment brush. And I don't know. I'm, I I don't know if this is going to look good or not. Oh, it's going to look. Oh, looks bad. great. Well, no. Hey, give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> See, look. I'm, look I'm, at that. He applied and then he faded it back. I'm trying so. to like find something that's going to make this look good. Well, maybe I can apply some blue to it. Might. Not. Oh God. Ooh. All right. Well, it's going to take me a minute to fix this, but I think whatever you do. So instantly, though, that's better. So your eye goes to the brightest thing in the scene. So if right. you have this like blinking highlight on the bottom of your picture, that's where the eye's gonna go. And you yeah. did a good job, you're on the right track with that vignette to take the brightness of the image and force the viewer into the center of the photo, but I think the vignette's a little heavy handed yeah. and it doesn't have much of a fade. Like I can see the edge of All the right. vignette here, so it doesn't look very natural. The only thing that I would say is if you're gonna go with something, let's go with it. Because you know what it is? If I hired you to take a portrait of my kids, which photographer shows up? Is it this one? Is it Moody Photographer? Is it the this one? Is it the the Visco the using? One? You know, yeah. it's like, I, and, and that's what I and that's what I think is a problem here. Is like, if I were to hire you to shoot my kids, I mean, you're not a bad photographer. You're not like, ooh, they're not very good. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you're pretty good. Your exposures are good. You have a couple of good shots there. Um, I think your your post processing could you could back off it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And again, I know that there is a crowd that's that really likes those the Visco looks and the Instagram looks, those people will never ever pay you to do anything. No. Nope. They're going to shoot their own kids with their own phone and that's as far as it's gonna go. So overall, I, not this bad. Is, yeah, I, I really bad. like the snow photo. I think if yeah, you, if you work with the process good. and some dodge and burn to kind of clean that up, I, I was a big fan of the snow photo. All right, let's take a look at what we have ne here next. Beautiful. All right, we got that, that's very nice. Ooh, I really like yeah. that one. And hey. Oh, there's people in there. Yeah, okay. they're way back <laughs> there, though. I understand they're trying to like tell a big story, but there's a lot stronger picture here mm -hmm. that uh, I think. Yeah, I just cropped that. There's a lot stronger photo inside your photo. Because this, all this stuff in front is not helping me. Because what your story is, is look, they're over here. So yeah. that's, that may not be crop of the year, by the way, but um, it's, it's that's better, certainly though. that's certainly better. And now, you know, with that crop too, start at the bottom <laughs> right of the image. Johan's back again. I got my armor. <laughs> oh yeah. So we were we we picked on Johan a lot. He's a really good guy. So it was just to totally joking, but uh, he's got his armor on today. So. Welcome back, Johan. Yeah. All right. So I, um, you know what? Can I, I, there's a, there's one shot here I think is really. I think this is a wonderful shot. That's that's cool. Let me see if I can blow it up a little so you can see a little better. I think this is a wonderful shot. I mean, I love the lighting and the gesture and, of course, the sky with the the, the stuff in it. What now, you got that all in camera, right? This is all this is all one shot? Doesn't matter. The bride and groom. <laughs> all right. So the bride and groom would love this, though, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, I think it's a very romantic and very nice. And she's going, look up there. It's a... Is that a flash? No. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I am. If we have to critique, I mean, that's the point of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I might see what we do if we grab the highlight slider and just just bring that down a little bit. 
That way the candles aren't too distracting. Because again, the candles, there well, you go. Well, you know what, let's, little... let's, let's do this though. Let's just paint over yeah, the candles. Down. And we don't need a blue tint now. <laughs> the blue Woo! tint is still on there from before, sorry. Just bring those candles, let's not make them gray, but let's bring those down a little yeah, bit. So anytime, yeah, and you could bring them up, couldn't you? Yeah, Good so any, anytime you have a light source in the scene, it's going to fight, it's going to compete to be the main focus. So if you just go in there and dodge them out like Scott's doing, knock the candles down, you know, we know what your focus is. Let's just, let's really hammer that home with um, the brightness of the Yeah, of no, them. good call. So let's just see like a... See how that shifted the color now? I, that was kind of heavy-handed, right? I just did it real quick to show you, but and let me hide the overlay so we don't have to see that. But just to take a quick look here, this is the before and after. You're basically telling the, the viewer, don't look at the lights on the ground. That's just supporting act. And that yeah, is... Look at them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, shot, Stephanie says that stream shot is great for weddings, but it's not really portraiture. You're right. That wasn't really a portrait. It was more of a, well, you could call it kind of an environmental portrait, but it was Absolutely. a, yeah. it was really a stream. And then, oh, look, there's people. That's in totally the back. environmental portrait. And I think with, with the crop too, I mean, if you looked at the bottom right of the photo, you still have all the bright white of the foam and the long exposure, and it leads you in to the bride and groom. With them so far back though, you didn't even bother to get all the way down the stream. Hey, we want to welcome, is it, I think it's Stefan Foss? Foster? So that was that Stefan? It's not Stephen, Stephen, right? Stephen? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Stephon? I'm going to go with Stephen. Stephen? I'm going to go with Stephen Foster. Stephen. It says, I took the day off so I could watch the grid live for a change. Yay! Awesome. Well, welcome. We were cool. very glad welcome. you're joining us. All right. So uh, there's a couple other shots here. Uh, I think this is just very nice. Very pretty light That's and everything. Great. great use of negative space. I like the way the, the, the veil flows into that. So there's a nice movement to the whole picture. All right. So this one is a little, this is going to sound really picky uni but it's a bigger thing. You know what would have made this shot a lot stronger? Hmm. If the lion wasn't looking off the screen. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you what, there is, there's a whole psychological thing about this. And when you're, and this is like when you're designing wedding pages, when you're designing advertising or whatever, the, that lion should be flipped and looking into the scene. It should not be looking like something's happening off scene. That's like a big, big no-no in, in design. So this, so you're thinking that's a little thing, but this image would have been so, so much stronger. So I'm going to cheat and we'll, we'll open it up and I'll show you what I mean. So Whoops, yeah, just when, when, we're talking about, open, right? when we're talking about guiding our viewer's eye through a photograph, there's a couple things that go to the brightest thing. They follow leading lines. And like Scott's saying, they also follow the gaze of your subject. So, you know, one's making great eye contact with the camera and the other one's like, hey, there's something going off on the side. And then it leads the viewer to kind of wonder, well, what's going on over there? Yeah, so, so this is, this is going to be a real total hack job. Oh, I'm loving but this. But it's well, it, give me a sec. It's not it's it's bad. I know it's bad, but I'm I'm going to try to just do a real quick. This is just going to, you know, you're going to kind of cut me some slack. So if you but, guys have ever photoshopped in front of somebody, try doing it in front of right. a live audience. But, all right. So that that gives That's you great. All right. So that yeah. gives you a better idea. Awesome. But looking in like that is tremendously stronger than looking out of the image. Take a look at the difference. That looking was a in. Pretty quick Good job. Uh, it was, you know. I think he he knows the photoshops in inside now. The photoshop stuff. But anyway, it it seems like a little but you know what it is? Can I tell you something about photography? It's all little stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's usually not the big stuff that sinks an image. It's little stuff. If you can fix two or three little things, it makes a big difference. Hey, Gareth, is it's first time watching the grid live. We are very glad you're here. Welcome. And Tristan Davies says, where do we find information about upcoming episode themes and when and where to submit photos? So so Tristan, here's where it's supposed to be. We're supposed to do blind critiques the first or second, well, it's usually about the 10th of the month. Somewhere around when a Wednesday falls in the second week of the month is when we're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. Where you find out information is, hold on, someone's calling. Oh, it's Gabe. No, I'm sorry, I can't really talk to Gabe. Um, but I love, I love Gabe. Anyway, uh, so here's the thing. If you follow me on Facebook or you follow my blog, either one of those, I gave, I think, two days notice. Like, hey, Wednesday, and then all day yesterday, and then today on, on Twitter and on Facebook. And every, if you follow me, you'll always know. But it's supposed to be around the first week. This is more like the second week, right, of April. Today's like, what, the 12th? 13th. No, we're like right on time. We didn't miss a month, but we're actually right on time. So in this time every every month. All right. All right. So Cosmodrome, never work, work with, with children, children and or animals. animals. All right. Well, that's the famous, that's a famous. Uh, that's like hurt. Yeah. Hurting cats. All right. So what do we think? This is not a bad photographer. I think they're, that's I great. think that's very nice. Nice expression. And it's like, she's getting a little handsy. Mm -hmm. And um, 
This is my least favorite of the bunch. It looks really contrived. Oh, the cover of my book is an upside down portrait of a girl. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't mean that every photo of an upside down girl looks. Uh, this particular photo doesn't look natural. Sometimes you get somebody where they lay in a in a field of flowers and it just looks like real. And this looks like they said, "All right, don't move. Can you do this? You know, etc." Mm -hmm. All right, question. Johan's asking a question to Eric. Do you ever crop your photos, and how do you stand on cropping in general? Whew. Okay, so I went to photo school for all of like six weeks, and I was it was hammered home during that very long period of photo education that you crop in camera, crop in camera, crop in camera. That's BS. Like fill your frame, but we shoot digital. We are creatives, just like dodging and burning. Cropping has existed since the real dark room. There's a crop tool since Photoshop one. Crop away because I'd rather maybe shoot and frame a little bit wide and then crop into a better composition, uh, but not crop in too tightly in camera and then possibly miss something. So it's like we shoot in color and then do black and white conversion in Photoshop. Really? Like I, why I throw away possibilities, you know? Right. If you if great you question, you here's what I say, and I talk about this on my seminar tour. If you take a photo and you look at it. And you see a stronger photo inside your photo, but you go, oh, I can't do that. Can't do it. <laughs> now, you gotta realize, the greatest photographers in history, the most famous names, pictures you wouldn't even know existed if they hadn't been cropped. Oh, so, like, Albert Watson's the guy behind the piano. Yes. You know, that, is, that is such a wide photograph. We can try to Google that or someone. Oh yeah, well, we talked there, about yeah. it on the grid. Yeah, um, it is. Um, <sighs> It's the, uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, if, you, if, you, if you see that 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 tight shot of the guy with the silhouetted piano with the, the head, that environmental portrait, that is probably twenty percent of the original frame, and that was oh it yeah, was a massive crop. It was a massive crop. Yeah. So if the greatest photography photographers in the history of photography felt it was okay to crop, why are you better than them? He's God. Well, yeah. The best. The people the that all these of pros, environmental portraits. Edward right? Watson yeah. said the per the people that all these, or Edward Weston, all the people that these people looked up to all cropped, mm -hmm. but now we're like, oh, I'm sorry. That's not how I do it. All right. That hey, was only uh, one of the reasons I dropped out of photo school. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Hybrid Dave uh, says, will I be in trouble if I call? Hi, Dave, you can call anytime. Dave is my guest blogger today, and the first thing I did this morning when I saw his guest blog was to, to, to send him a text and go, dude, you did a great job on, on your guest blog. You really did. If you get a chance, go to scottkelby.com. It's Wednesday, so go on. If you're, you're watching this in replay uh, on Wednesday, go check out Dave's. Dave is a travel photographer, a very, very good travel photographer, but he has a good message and interesting story through the whole thing, so go check it out on my blog. And uh, Dave, if you call, we, we'll, we'll take your call. Now, um, Hybrid Peter, who is <laughs> Dave's business partner in photography, says, uh, should I show Cartier-Bresson's best shot of the century photo that was cropped like crazy? Time Magazine called one of Henry Cartier-Bresson's, and it was called Behind the, the Guerre Saint-Lazare, mm -hmm. the photo of the century, and it was cropped from this down to this. Mm -hmm. And then it was dodged and burned to death. All right. Uh, then son, somebody says, will you be in trouble if you post his number in the chat room? Yes, he Probably. will be. <laughs> hey, we are going to take a short break. Can I tell you something we're going to do that you're going to love? We have two of Eric's books that we are giving away today. This book just freaking tore it up. Shooting in Beep. bad word light. Bad lighting. It begins with an S. Hold on. We'll show it. We'll get it close we'll because we don't want to say it. Shooting in naughty light. Insert bad word. And then here we have... My contrived upside down girl portrait. <laughs> but this is uh, portrait photography. So this is for anyone who's just picking up a camera or people who are already taking portraits and want to step up their game, lighting diagrams, uh, tips, tricks, the whole nine. There you go. We're gonna look at a whole lot more images. We're just, just getting started here. We're gonna be giving those away. And uh, what else? That's it. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We're live here on the grid. See ya. What else? That's it. Are you a photographer looking to create some really great promotional material but you don't know where to start? Well I'm going to show you how in this class called InDesign for Photographers. This one's just for you. We're going to go through InDesign, I'm going to show you some basic tips and tricks, some skills, we're going to add images, logos, QR codes, icons and by the end of it we're going to create a really great looking brochure that you can be proud of. I'm Dave Clayton, I'm a Kelby One instructor. Come and join my class on kelbyone.com. 
Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here, and I want to invite you to watch my brand new class on the Nick Collection plugins. So get this, Google made these free, right? Google bought Nick software a few years ago. They made these amazing set of plugins, seven plugins, they made them free. How can they afford to do that? It's because they're Google. They got money just everywhere. So they said, let's make these free for photographers. And what I want to do in this class is I want to teach you what they do, how to use them. I don't want to just demo them because you can go watch demos online. I want to teach you exactly how I use them in my own workflow because these plugins, they're so much better than you think. They're amazing. I know so many photographers where these plugins are their post-processing secret weapon. I'm going to show you which ones I use, which ones I don't, exactly how to use them. It's an awesome set of plugins. Come and watch my class exclusively on Kelby One. Hey, we're back live here on The Grid. We have Eric Fallon, lifestyle photographer from New York City. As our guest, we're going through our blind critiques. And uh, hey, just want to mention, uh, I want you to go to photoshopworld.com. So the Photoshop World Conference is coming up this July in Las Vegas. And you're thinking, where can I go to be really, really hot and sweaty? There you go, go to Photoshop World. Now, luckily, most of Photoshop World happens indoors. But anyway, we'd love to have you come. Uh, this is, now is the high time to sign up. And uh, go to photoshopworld.com, get all the information, all the details, it's all there. You can save money if you sign up now because you have Earl Bird Special. If you're a Kelby One member, you get another 100 bucks off. It's all good. It's like free money from the sky. You ready to get back to work? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Somebody else, somebody new, somebody borrowed, somebody blue. All right, we're gonna look through all five of them real quick. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so uh, comments, Eric? Um, it's really disjointed. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> You know, I mean, nothing like not even speaking to any one of the individual portraits. The the collection that you put together isn't really much of a collection. It's just the only unifier is people. Um, the processing's all over the place too, going between the black and the white and the color. Um, again, that doesn't make any one of them bad, but it's you kind of want your process to lend itself to the photo. And I don't understand why this would be black and white, and a candid like this would be black and white. This I can see why you made that black and yeah, white. Yeah, that looks that's like so that you, looks moody and black yeah, and white. Yeah, you, you want the image to kind of drive your your processing um, a little bit there. So that would be my first thing: is try to unify your your pictures so that they all look like they're coming from you. And then one way to do that is processing. I mean, Dave Hill and people overcooked the heck out of things, and that was his signature look for a couple of years, and he shot for Reebok. So. Um, you want to kind of unify your stuff, especially if you want to be known. Yeah, for this your stuff looks like. Look at this things. from this photographer here to here. Two completely different people. Two completely different people. This person I would hire for senior portraits and stuff. Yep. You know, um, that person. That's just a cool photo. I like the black and white. It'd make a great book cover or something, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't mean like a photography book cover. I mean like a book cover for you know like a a fiction or something like that. But uh, right. yeah, it's just kind of all over the place. And you know what though. All of the photos are good on their own. It's mm -hmm. just it's just all over this place. So you can shoot a little bit of everything, but there's no consistency. It's just, I can't tell anything about you other than you know how to use a camera. And I would, see that right there, it, I see why that was included because it's it's a moment. It's the, the most sincere photograph that you have in there, but I yeah. don't think it's a good photo. But I think you're definitely on the right track and you're drawn to this, I'm assuming, because it's this this moment and you, that's real character that you're, you're getting from your subject. Um, so pursue that. Maybe in these controlled environments here where you're playing with light and you're doing the split lighting and unique lighting here, you know, set it up and just be ready for those in-between moments to capture a moment like this with, with your that, lighting like yeah. that. And that's what'll get you to a great portrait. Because this is good lighting, that's a great moment. You put How those you together, those you together, set the yeah. stage, that's what's gonna get you a really good portraiture. That's very insightful. Hey, got some, got some uh, comments here. So Stephanie says, uh, hey, looking at the blog, Hybrid Dave is a good looking fella. He's a stud. Stephanie, not only is Dave a good looking fella, he's a single good looking fella with a British accent. Now, I don't know, but here in the United States, that's pretty much all you need. Force if you're reveals. even reasonable looking with a British accent, you will never be alone, not for 30 seconds. Gareth says that's an awesome book about your book. Awesome. Um, so, uh, Johan uh, has a question. Uh, question to Eric. 
Uh, what for you is the difference between a portrait and a lifestyle shot? Is it the lighting? Is it the subject? What is it? Okay, so I guess it's um, it's usually your end goal, so it's a combination. A portrait is is trying to showcase the person. Uh, you should be getting some kind of character or an, envir an environmental portrait. You're trying to get um, some kind of deeper working knowledge of who that person like is or what they do. Like a story, their right? story, right. yeah. Um, where lifestyle photography is selling the activity, it's selling the lifestyle itself. So a lifestyle photograph should make you want to get off your couch and go join those runners or go jump in that pool or do something to embrace that lifestyle. And then the portrait is about the person. So it's either telling a deeper story about that person or casting that person in a different light. Yeah, so if you look at your, your stuff, it's very, it's very obvious. Your stuff looks like, it looks very commercial, which is why you get commercial work because it looks like, hey, it looks like an ad. It looks like, look at those people having fun. Look at that. If you look, if follow on Instagram, if they follow you on Instagram, they'll totally get your... Cool. Your, your yeah, vibe. definitely. More, another shameless plug. Eric V Photo, E R I K V Photo on Instagram. Definitely give that a follow. Um, and I, I try to show the behind the scenes stuff, and I try to comment on the photographs so that you guys get some insight into it. There's no, there's no secrets. It's there's everyone's got the same equipment out there. So yeah. hey, I'm so glad to see so many people watching the live uh, broadcast for the first time. Lily Photo or Lily Photog. Oh, welcome. Bray said, super excited to watch this live. First time. Huge fan. Thanks very much. Awesome. Sky Cloud Photography. Hello, everyone. First time really watching this live. Welcome. Yay. Um, real question. Uh, a real uh, Fran. Fran's here. Fran's always here. Hi, Fran. Fran's in the UK, and she can vouch for Dave's uh, accent. And handsomeness. And handsomeness. Yes, she can. Fran says, a question for Eric, unrelated to the critiques, but where's your favorite place to shoot in New York City? Oh, that's tough. Okay, so... Um, if you look on my Instagram, there's a recent shot of downtown Manhattan. It's a landscape, not a portrait, and that's actually in Brooklyn Bridge Park. Uh, I get a lot of questions where I took that from. It's got all the, it got the, the, the pylons, pylons in the yeah. front. Yeah, so you, uh, you take the F train to the York stop, and you walk down past a little carousel, Brooklyn Bridge Park. That's a great place. If you're visiting New York and you want to get an iconic shot of New York City, go to Brooklyn Bridge Park. If you just want to walk around and maybe do some environmental portraits, check out the High Line. So, so it's Fran's, in Manhattan so on the Fran's, west side. So Fran's from London, and you're going, you take the F train. You're like, oh, of course, yes. <laughs> it's like she, so write that, she, write that down. She doesn't live in Staten Island. Park. Okay. So uh, TK Photography says we're now starting a Kelby One Singles Group. So Cool. Well, I'll be we'll, in there, too. You'll be go. in there, of course. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, we're going to get back to this. Stephen Foster says, thank you, thank you, thank you for the Nick collection class. You are absolutely welcome. Watched it last week, and I'm in the groove now. Oh, Nick Collection. Oh, it's Stefan. I think Thank it's Stefan. 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 Seriously, how good is the Nick Collection, right? So it's awesome. awesome. All right. Let's go to some more. Let's take a look at the next. Let me grab the next uh, photographer here, and uh, let's take a look and see what we've got. All right. So uh, here we go. All right. All right. So can I, can I say something? Fire away. <laughs> there's, there's, there's two good shots here. And there's one bad shot <laughs> and one that I don't know. There's a, okay. So there's I'll let disconnect. you go through. All right. Okay. This is great. Great use of yeah. shadow. Um, really pops the subject out. And I like that you put the rim light there. To, that way she doesn't completely fade to black and she's not floating in space. So it's little things like Scott said, that rim light putting the edge to the, the headdress is yeah. huge. So that's good there. Nice contact with the eyes and all that kind of stuff. This is just dead. Yeah, what happened here? Um, so portraiture is unique in that you can be as technically sound as you, as you, as any other photographer out there, but if you don't have a connection with your subject, um, it's going to be a bad photo. So neat lighting, uh, but you need to, need to capture something there. We're not photographing flowers, we're photographing people. So we need some engagement, a smile, a spark. Um, it looks like we kind of caught her like in between a blink maybe, like very dead expression. So Yeah, and you know what else too? The backlight is way too hot. Look at the backlight. It's turning. I mean, I, I love a rim light. I like something that adds some interest. You're like like two stops too hot on that backlight. And uh, she's giving you nothing, though. You know what? It doesn't matter if your lighting was dead on. She's giving you nothing. Nothing. Peter Hurley would have a field day with uh -oh. the nothingness that she's giving you. And then you turn the page, and here's an awesome shot. That's cool. I think that's a really interesting shot. And I love the lighting, and I love the facial expression, and I think it's, I don't even know what's going on, how it's cropped, or if she's looking through a door, but I think that's a really great shot. And this, I think, is totally inappropriate lighting for the subject. So, and so, and we were talking about this, because I saw, we saw this on the break. So here's what it is, and I was just telling Eric this. So you have, you have a, a, a pregnant woman 
So you need to think, what would be a really flattering uh, scenario for her to be in? What would be flattering and lighting for her to be in? It looks like she's going to a club or she just came from a club. It, and it's, it's like sunrise the morning after. Yeah, it's, and this we is, know how she got that it baby. Looks like now. It's inappropriate lighting for the subject. This should be really soft. There shouldn't be a kicker light coming off the side. This, this is, is glam how you, lighting. Yeah, this is like glamour lighting, and she's wearing a red dress. It's like Roxanne. Roxanne. I don't. I don't. I can't quite put my finger on it, but you can make an absolutely beautiful, heartwarming, gorgeous photo of a pregnant woman. This is not it. This is like in the total opposite direction. And I, I, you could be saying, well, that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to do it at sunset. I've seen sunset photos of beautiful uh, pregnant women that don't look like I'm, I just stepped out of a cab. It's just, it, this is like the lighting's wrong. The background's wrong. It's just, this is a shot gone wrong. You know what's bad is you know how to do lighting. Like your lighting's pretty good, but it's just, it's inappropriate for the subject. It's not inappropriate like it's inappropriate on a sexual kind it's of just, thing. It's mismatched. It's, just, it's mismatched. Yeah. It's like, that's how I would light an athlete. So here's where, here, mom. here's where here's where this, this educational curve goes. We get good with lighting, and then we light because we can do it. You know, right. But lighting needs to be, or lighting should be, um, appropriate to the subject. Like Scott's saying, yeah. it's not like, oh, man, that's so inappropriate, but it's not matched well at all. The lighting style doesn't complement your subject in that. Hey, look, you got a new up. follower. Lily Photog says, yes. mm, your Instagram is amazing. Following, smiley face. Thank you, Lily. And Anonymous1968 has been watching for three years. Thank you, Anonymous1968. Um, you know, by three years, you probably should have registered a name. That yeah, you or introduce so, yourself or, or you know, <laughs> something. I. How do I submit a photo for critique? Usually the day or two before I mention it on, uh, on either, um, I mentioned it today on LightroomKillerTips.com, but usually if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, I put it out numerous times, usually the day before and a lot during the day. All right, so... Uh, this photographer's got real potential. Real the promise. lighting, you got the lighting down. Yeah. And some of your, your composition is really good. So here's where you start working with the connection with the subject. Yeah, that's, connection that's with the, the subject. But, but you're, technically your sound, but go watch one of Peter Hurley's yeah, but they're, things. Yeah, they're pretty good. All right, so uh, let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is another one of those where we get... It's like when HDR first came about. Everyone's like, HDR is the rage, so let's process the heck out of everything. Over-process yeah. it. So here, you are good at Photoshop. You are good at lighting. You are not good with restraint. Oh, no. This, so, is, this, this is frequency separation <laughs> gone, gone mad. Gone mad. So here's what. You learned frequency se separation, which is a portrait high retouching end, technique. High-end retouching technique. It is a high-end yeah. retouching technique that allows you to smooth the skin uh, well, not smooth the skin. It allows you to blend the skin, but you you cranked it to 100, and I think that frequency separation is good at like 30 percent or less. Or yeah. less. It's supposed to to help smooth the skin and things like. And this is this looks like absolute plastic. No one's skin looks like this. But you're in your defense. You kept the pore detail, so this is well executed. Yeah, but that's what frequency separation. Yeah, but it's just like this is where you would then take that and then fade it. Like yeah. frequency, frequency separation is supposed to get rid of um, pot marks or blemishes or shadows and or changes in, in color of skin. Like if you go from a, like red splotchy areas pigments. and things like yeah. that. Yeah, this is um. Yeah. Now, what's bad about it is everything else is pretty good. Your like the lighting's great. good and your subjects are interesting and all. But it, every shot has massive. Frequency separation. It's just, it's just, it's so distracting. I can't look at anything else. It's so like keep, it's keep the pictures, but th throw the processing out the window and kind start of start over. Start over. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to work on those eyes. That's gray. That's just straight up gray. The, the they're just supposed saturation. to be the whites of their eyes. You, you really, you spent like a lot of time on the skin and like zero time on the eyes, and the eyes are more important. So that's that's the. Uh, Thing. Hey, Anonymous3361 says, can you repeat the Instagram handle one more time? Yeah, Eric. it's Eric V Photo. So one word, E-R-I-K-V Photo. I think Scott, can, can you pull it up? Or? I can. I'll pull it up awesome. on, on the next break. Cool. So, hey, so photography and lighting and stuff, A+. Plus. Good, yeah. Frequency separation technique, you know it. It's just, and you know, can I tell you what happens? And this is why I, I, I don't really blame you. Because what happens is 
you, you do it on one photo and then you do it on another and as more you do it, you start to become immune to how it looks. Oh yeah. And you, you don't realize when other people look at it, you're like, you know, it's like, it's like HDR. And I think that's why people turned up the volume so high on HDR. The first time you do it, you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. What if I pushed it a little further? And after you start processing a bunch of images, you don't realize your stuff looks like a clown. You get and desensitized. So, not, yeah. I wasn't saying this that, that these look like a clown, but I think what's happened is you just learned frequency separation. And say, then you go and you kind of got to just back off it a little bit and you'll, you'll, you'll get there. Yeah, but, so but it's just... Fade it down. Yeah. Everything else like, is great. Like do this, like put it on its own layer, right? Like make a... Make a uh, a merged layer on top in Photoshop when you're done with your frequency separation and just lower the opacity. Simply go from 100 to like 30. And, and I can't tell you what the number is because what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to move and, and uh, <laughs> somebody wrote something very funny. <laughs> you're going to move that, that and find what the sweet spot is. Badger said, that person spent his whole life finding a person with 100% <laughs> perfect skin and now you call it frequency separation. Oops. That's not real skin. That's not anywhere close to real skin. Let me put it this way. A Barbie doll has more realistic skin than what we just saw. Okay. But anyway, good photographer. Bad retoucher. It's not too late to fix that. Here we go. Let's look at these. We're going to have to pick it up oh, the already, base a bit here. We oh, these. we did. Good. All right. Yeah, we'll there's, the, one there's the bear. There's the bear. Here we go. All right. Okay. I'll say this. You can tell it's the same photographer, at least. Yeah. Even though the processing's different on some, it looks like one photographer took all of these. Mm -hmm. um, and, and here's where these photographs might have been taken a year apart. So our, our, our habits and our tendencies with the processing and toning kind of changes over time. So here's where you have to sometimes go back at your work and reprocess older photos. I mean, I found myself doing this when I put together a whole new portfolio of work. I found pictures from two or three years ago, and I was like, yeah, I don't process the same way. So That's true. You, Boy, is that true. This, this right here has that vintage feel. You're going with the green... Um, tones and everything. You might find this in a lot of the preset packs, and then yeah, this was probably shot in a gray background. Yeah, that white seamless moldy. or gray seamless, and it went went really green and moldy. Went really green and moldy. And then here, like this is this is not a very well processed photograph. She's still very hot. There's there's red kind of blotchy skin tones going on here. A lot of work can be done to this. Like this is an interesting photo. Uh, this right here, everything's too bright and too flat. I would, one of your other yeah. photos here has a lot of drama and a lot of direction to the light. Um, here, a vignette or maybe even a gradient. There's things you can do here that would make this a stronger image. Or even a crop. This might be a vertical crop. There you go. Radial. Love it. Radial is nice, isn't it? Yeah. I like the radial. The radial is a great hack for exactly what Scott's doing right now. I do this a lot. And then what I would do is go back to the original image and brighten it up just a hair. There you go. So let's take a look from there to there. There you go. And yeah. so it's just not, it's, I mean, it's like a 30 second fix, but it's, it's not awesome. But y y her, her blouse was blooming. You know what I mean? Like the white was too white and it was starting to get a glow that I don't think you were trying to get. It was just, you let the highlights get too bright, which, which that's going to happen a lot when you're using a strobe and someone's wearing a white shirt. Yeah. Light hair, light skin. I, I just had a retouching nightmare. I was updating uh, agency models' commercial headshots. She just got her blonde hair redone. She only brought three white tops, and one was like a white spaghetti. I'm like, and she's pasty. This is New York City. She hasn't been out in the sunshine for six months. She's pasty. Pasty. Oh. So hey, uh, ran into the same thing. So radio tool and dodging and burning came in really handy there. Couple, uh, couple of quick uh, comments here. Can we submit someone else's photos so they can hear the critique from someone else? <laughs> wow. That sounds loaded. Wow. Jeez. That really, really does sound like I don't know. Um, wow. I mean, let me put it this way. You're not supposed to. But how would we ever know? It's anonymous. It's anonymous, Just 72, like you, anonymous. 701. So, you know, but it would be kind of, it would certainly be kind of mean because I think you'd be doing it to go, I've been telling them they're don't not any so. good and you guys need to tell them they're not any good. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sketchy on that. Um, someone says, please advise for a portrait lens for the Canon T3i, a, a Canon 85 1.4. I don't think Canon makes an 85 1.4. I think they make a 1.2 or 1.8. Canon 85 1.4 or 
an M42 Pentagon, I don't even know what that is, 15 blades preset, what? Okay, so you seem to know a lot about this Pentagon, so uh, you're, I'm assuming you're trying to get our permission to justify your purchase, you're, so go for it. You're off, you're <laughs> off brand, <laughs> sure, yeah. get that Pentagon. Go for it. And then we can't then, even then, pronounce then, it. Then let us know. I shoot the Tamron 85, 1.8, it's cheap, fast, amazing quality, it just came out like a month ago, so that's what I use. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but yeah. Okay, but 85 is, is a nice, if, you're, if you want that really super shallow depth of field, it's a good lens. Uh, all right, so uh, we, we're, I've been told that it's time to it's take okay. a short break. It's time for a short break. We got Eric V in the house. Uh, glad that we have so many new viewers watching us live. We're glad to have you here, and we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Yeah, welcome. That was a very good you want to take your design skills to the next level. You want to learn how to build a winning portfolio. You want hands-on training with live models. You want to mingle with the top professionals of photography and design. You want three days of Las Vegas energy and excitement. That's why you're going to Photoshop World in Vegas. Space at squarespace.com. Hey everybody, Mac Laskowski here, and we're gonna shoot cityscapes. We'll talk about shooting locations and some of the different places that you can get to capture a city and capture everything around the city. We'll talk about longer exposures, capture some of the energy that's around the city and get that into your photo. Then we're gonna get into the city and do some detailed shots, get some of the buildings, the architecture, the edges, the corners, and create some really dramatic photos. No matter where you live, you're probably gonna be in Air City. Come watch my class over on Kelby One. I'll show you how to take better pictures of it. Hey everybody, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Valland. Uh, we are doing uh, blind critiques. Hey, I pulled up uh, Eric's Instagram if you wanna take a quick look on uh, my screen here. And uh, Boop. there we go. I love this shot right there. That's just beautiful lighting and a great expression and uh, lots of cool stuff on his. Here's this club. Look, I'm leading this cool life that you're not leading. That was oh, look, I'm in a studio Delta. using lighting you can't afford. <laughs> Here's me with a Ferrari. Oh, come on, Eric, for gosh sakes. And uh, that's just naughty. What the heck's well, going if on you there? Scroll, there you go. If you scroll down, those are speed lights. Click on that one, bottom left. There? Yeah. Well, thank you for throwing a speed light in to make us feel good, Mr. Pro Photo. And below, below that, it's natural light. All right. Well, anyway, there's lots of cool stuff there. Oh, yeah, this is, there's a sitting by the pool. Look, drinking plants. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's got a really cool Instagram there, feed. There's the mountain that the beard was for. All right. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just delighted. Okay, so anyway. Uh, Eric we, V. Photo, there it is Eric, at the top. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Eric oh. V. Photo. Go follow him immediately as fast as you can. Run, run like the wind. Let's look at some more shots. Here we go. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? You all right? Okay. So this is like, which one of these is not like the other? You have this three one. great headshots and two crappy headshots. And you've definitely gotten, I, I, can, I can tell where you're taking your cues from, or I could guess educationally and from what headshot photographers. Is it from F-stoppers? You're, you're looking at, there's like a Dylan Patrick and there's also a Peter Hurley. So you're educating yourself on headshots and you're there's producing your good work. Yeah. Now, now, can I tell you something technically on this one? Hmm. This is a bad crop. If you're going to crop the top of the head, you need to take Not a enough. third or more. Yeah. When you take just this little bit, it means I made a mistake. Whoops. And people will look at this, and the first thing they'll say is, well, you cut the crop of, top of her head off. If you cropped it right, which, which admit, lets everyone know it was a very intentional crop, 
then no one says you cut the top of her head off. This looks like our question earlier. What do you think of cropping? Well, it looks like you accidentally miscropped in camera, so yeah. that's a great fix. Yeah. Yeah. You need to take commit gonna, to the head crop if you're going to do it. Take a full third or two thirds. If you take an eighth, it looks very very funky. So uh, that was bad. Fran Hughes wants to know. Did anyone see that hilarious little character animation on my Facebook page? My daughter helped. My daughter did all of that. I just did the talking. She she directed it. She created my avatar. She did everything. She's ten. And she's awesomeness. Listen all to right. the very very end. You can hear her just totally lose it and crack yeah. up. At the she very loses last it when second. she couldn't get the size right. It was just a very funny. But anyway, so, this is a much stronger photo, by the way, cropped correctly like that. So let's go to left of this one, and then one more. This is great. Yep. And then let's go one more over. What the what heck happened? happened here? This is an on-camera flash. We can see that the tiny little speck in her eyeball if we, if we crop in. Um, lose that. If you do use an on-camera flash or an on-camera light modifier as a fill, which is very popular in commercial work and, and portraiture, I like to Photoshop it out. That little speck by itself doesn't yeah, work. But the whole, the whole thing doesn't work here. Go, I mean, yeah, go put a... Go put a soft box in there. Go go put a go put a uh, and off to the side, not dead in the center. Yeah. So yeah. So lose this. I mean, maybe this is yeah. run and gun headshot, and you're trying to you it, know add a little belong, little bit of fill. It doesn't belong in there. But it's you have much stronger work. Much much stronger. The first know, portrait we the saw, and then this one. Uh, I can't get this thing to unzoom now. Stop zooming. Okay. Because unfortunately, we're judged by our, the weakest links on our profile, our and portfolios. That's, and that's that was weak. And this one's. Uh, There's another Hur Hurley style that's good. Um, but you know what? You got a little crop hot. It, it yeah, is the crop, and it's a little hot. You got left to right too. Let's crop them in to where it looks like it was intentional. And, and we're going to watch Star can, Wars. There we go. <laughs> I think we can make it. Yeah, there we go. If you're going to crop it, let's crop it. Did I lose my connection? Commit to the crop. Uh-oh, I think I lost my connect. Did I lose my connection? Hang on, everybody. Sorry, for some reason it dropped my uh, connection to Control Room 2. And if you've ever lost your connection to Control Room 2, it's very sad. Oh, we're going to have to power All right. you too. Uh, am I losing power too? Jeez, everything. All right, let's recrop him. He needs some serious croppage. He needs some... Cropperitata. And I'm I'm happy to see that this that these horizontal shots and these head crops are becoming more popular. I mean, they used to be taboo for a while. I like them. This is cool. Yeah. Uh, you know what it is? I mean, this is you could say it's technically correct. I don't think it's a, just it's not a very good portrait. It's just did you did you do the lighting right for I a Peter know. Hurley esque? Yeah. Yeah. But is the guy giving you any great? It's not a bad expression. It's a I don't a little know. bit of a smirk, but you could pull more expression out of it. Yeah, Again, I, I this, this so, is another absolutely. case where you have control of your lighting, so now just start working yeah. the emotion. Yeah, this is just bad. This is, again, an on-camera fill. I yeah. like what you're doing here. It's better than if there were no fill light at all, but this is a snapshot versus other ones are really great headshots. Yeah. So call your work. Drop those two yeah. snapshots, and then your whole Yeah, if you actually had these better. three right here, it's, they're the, definitely the strongest. Yeah. Those three are definitely strongest. That's strong with the crop. This one needs a crop, and it you can you can do better than this, but it's not that's not Good too bad. Good stuff though, yeah. Not too bad. All right, on to the next one. All right, let's go see. Here we go. I'm guessing this is from Brian Cote, but I I could be oh, wrong. Oh, you watermarked. Don't watermark. Okay. Hey, also, just, don't into? don't uplight while we're here. <laughs> That, that's what you do to make people look scary. So if yeah. you want people to look scary, like if I was going to shoot a football player and I want to make them look really menacing, what do I do? Hot make sure the that light. the light on the bottom is hotter than the light on the top, which is what you did here, which is why her neck is so freaking bright. Yeah. And then her face is not. So we're looking at the Unflattering, neck. Unflattering. Bad lens choice, too. This so is all bad. That's you bad. can kind of save that by dodging and burning the neck. You always want the neck to be darker. Yeah, to but be you're darker. not going to fix the, the uplighting in her face. You're in trouble on this one. This, that was in trouble. But yeah, the clamshell light's a great technique. Just you know, want to make sure your top light's brighter right, than your right bottom there. light. My, my, I got some. I got some power here. Let me grab some power. I just saw some power. Oh, thank you. Power. He's, power. He's got the power. But you got some cojones for submitting watermarked work. Uh, the other one was stronger here. Yep. Lighting's kind of flat, and expression now, was really flat. Now this one's really good, I think. It's a great character portrait. This is a really good character portrait. This guy's giving you something, and it's good post processing. And I like the sharpening. I like the post. Lose, I like the shot. Lose the the film the little framing edgy thing. though. Yeah, that reminds me of very like hipstermatic whoa, why is like it doing that I, iPhone stuff. Yeah, I the black get, and white process sharp. Everything's good, but it just it yeah, looks you like you're trying that. with the you hipster border. But 
that's a great very shot. good. That's the. I think that may be one of the best shots of the day, right there. And then there was this. Um, this one, your light's too far from the side. Bring yep. it around to the front. That'll give you that Rembrandt lighting. Tone it down. It's overexposed. Work on your expression. Yeah, the expression. Have them bring their face out towards you a little bit more. She's doing like a, a tuck here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the black turtleneck saved you from the hot underlighting. Yeah. <laughs> if, only right. she, if only that girl had a black turtleneck on. Yeah, a black turtleneck would have helped you here. Okay. So I think as far as, like, your composition goes, I think you're composing correctly. Um I, I think your composition's good. I think you need to work on your lighting a lot. And this is, if this is lit with, I don't know what it's lit with. It's that's it's, your best commercial headshot. Of, but of it's very flat looking as far as lighting goes. Like, there's not a lot of depth in this shot. There's barely any shadow, and it's okay if you're trying to do flat lighting. But it's so what you do is raise your key light slightly, or this is where you go in and you dodge and burn a little bit. You could yeah. definitely add depth to this. Yeah, that, that's probably the best one, except for this one's awesome. Yeah. So cool. you are absolutely, you you can make a really, really great, you really, really great portrait. That is a really great portrait. Mm -hmm. So, and you've got some good post-processing skills. I would work on the lighting. I think other than that, you're kind of there. And getting a little bit more from your subjects is always going to be a thing. Here we go. That last one's just creepy. Okay, so this is creepy. This is a mixed bag. We've got some fan, it's, we've got it's some a, fantasy it's stuff a mixed, in here. It's a mixed bag. Then someone took a Danny Diamond tutorial, and there we go. Okay, so um, let's jump into the actual portraits. This is cool. I might Photoshop out the pedestal in the back, simplify yep. your scene as much Absolutely. as possible. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, this is that classic underexposed and then dodge back in. Um, this right here, if you're going to shoot this kind of stuff, um, the light is brightest on her hips and it should be brighter on, on the face. face. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe dodge that down just a little bit. Um, and then you got an S curve in there, but start look at, look at more posing classes by bringing the hips yep. less squared to camera. You slim people up a lot too. Creepy. The eyes look really just scary. Uh, this is my favorite one. Yeah. I kind of like the moment and flowers and there's cropping in the scene and... This all works. Background selection, everything works for that composite. This one just went wrong. I wish there was a scene there. You have a great headpiece and everything and, you know, really great styling. That, It'd be cool if that was a scene. Is that a great headpiece? I mean, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm a commercial photographer <laughs> outside no, of my realm. No, I would say this. Go look at some of Lindsay Adler stuff. She'll do stuff with headpieces that look fantastic. Okay, you're right. This My just looks like a great headpiece. This, this is, is not yeah. a great headpiece. This is like I don't know what's going on there. All right, I think but she rents them too. Yeah, go check out. Yeah, Dream, go Dream Shoot, Shoot Rentals. Rentals. Yeah. All right, these are wedding. We're not going to look no. at that. Sorry, wedding. Oh, that's really small. That's Let me see thumbnail. if I, well. Sometimes I can open these up in, in camera raw, and it'll be a little bit better. All right, it's a little pixelated, but you get the idea. Okay, adorable. Um, I think you went. Uh, yeah, I think you went the wrong way with your clarity slider here. I think you went left when you yeah. should have gone right. So yeah, this is it, like, or you have Vaseline it looks on your really lens like from pasty 1960 or something. Yeah, but it also can I tell you something? I think what you were going for was a fine art look, like the old world look. Mm -hmm. I think this just looks old fashioned. I don't think it looks old world. Old world is a Rembrandt painting. This looks like 1980s portraiture. This looks like, I don't know, this is not, it's not working. And on to the next one. And this is completely this different. Is, and this is a bad composite. So there's no way that guy was there. Not with that lighting and that sky. So when you, get, when you guys are getting into composites, guys, you have to make sure you match the direction of the light in every piece that you comp in. Or you have to change it through dodging and burning. But light's coming from all different directions here. Shadows aren't really. Yeah, and, and it looks like it's stuck on there. It really looks very stuck. I have it on authority that um, Lindsay Adler might not be single anymore. I don't know, hybrid Peter. Just want to update you. It's cool. Maybe dial the eyes back a little bit here. You definitely lit them up, which was nice because she was squinting, but dial them, dial them down a little, a little too bright. I don't know what's going on there. 
So it's too crunchy. Yeah, Someone it's too got crunchy. It's with sharpening. All right, so we have we definitely have some post pro all through this. You you got post processing issues. They're they're not really photography issues. Mm -hmm. You need to work on your post a little bit, and by a little I mean a lot. Yeah. Can I tell you something? You have to be careful when you start using cross processing effects because they can be very unflattering. Making people green is usually not a good thing. Yeah, this is just a, you gotta work on your post processing. The photography's not bad, the post needs a, needs a lot of work. All right, we're getting down to the end here. I'll pick five. Okay. Eric, I'll let you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> he sums up my reaction perfectly. Um, so let, let's run back through. This is a snapshot, and you have a tree growing out of her head, and she's got dark hair, so she blends into it. Um, look out for background elements. You don't want big tree branches growing out of your subject's head. Uh, so that's a no-no there. It just looks like a snapshot, though. Um, street photography, this is neat. Um, I like the, the negative space that you have this on the This is the top. best one. That's the best one for sure. Uh, this right here is cropped too tightly. Yep. Not sure what's going on. Don't crop the on. chin. The chin, it, it's a, very cool to crop the head. It's very popular. It's very contemporary. Cutting the chin, the chin off, uh, you got to be real. You got to have just the right shot. This isn't it. Too tight. Yeah. Um, this, your post processing just is not doing him any favors. Neither is the lighting. But if the lighting's natural, so be it. If it's not, I would bring the light in higher a little bit, cast more down shadow. Um, and then the post processing here is actually enhancing what looks like the green and the yellows and the fluorescent colors yeah. in, in the room. And that just makes people look sickly. So um, you might want to tone that down. That would make a better black and white, honestly, too, with all the busy colors of the books in the background. That's cute. There you go. That's all I got on that <laughs> That's cute. Some comments here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Question to Eric, uh, what is your favorite diffuser to use in photography? Uh, Studio and outdoors. Okay, my favorite diffuser is the Sun Swatter. It's um, by California Sunbounce. It's like a giant fly swatter except for its diffusion. And that's my favorite because a single assistant can just boom this pole up with a big diffusion material on the end of it and wave it around and hold it over my subject. So if my subject's running or moving or static or wherever, uh, he can just hold it over and it doesn't require multiple light stands and sandbags. It's really low key. It's really portable. Um, and I like to just be able to run and gun and let my subjects move around so they feel comfortable and look natural in the photo. So it is a sun bounce sun swatter. All right, we're all is right with the world. Dave Clayton has finally shown up. Hey, Dave. Dave says, hi, everyone. He was working on a Photoshop user magazine feature article, so he guessed he didn't have time to check in on the oh, grid. That's, that, that is oh, the only well. acceptable excuse. That though, is the so. only one that we will. We would have accepted four different answers, but the right answer, of course, is was working on Photoshop user magazine feature article. A hybrid Ben says that guy, and he means you, uh, is living a way cooler life than me. In the chat is hybrid Dave, hybrid Peter, hybrid Ben, and hybrid hybrid. It's a hybrid kind of day. <laughs> oh, Dave Clayton says we've all dated Eric. Find me somebody that hasn't. Ooh. Okay. That was mean. All right, just a few more. We got to wrap this bad boy up. Here we go. Let's see what we got. One, two, three. Four, five. Senior portraiture. First off, <laughs> I, remove your vignette and never touch it again. This is, again, vignette guy, this isn't as bad as like the reverse vignette, like the white vignette. The white vignette is instant death. Yeah, but this is second... This is the second time we've seen this. Vignette is, is not cool. Everything else in your picture should be focusing the viewer in on your subject. You shouldn't have to rely on really dark banding around the outside of your image to do that. So yeah, first, you, delete now, the vignette, because your lighting is good. Yeah, if you want to add a very, very, if you add a vignette, no one should go, oh, there's a vignette. It should, it should darken the edges so slightly that you don't know that we wouldn't be able to go, you have a vignette. So that's, that's I, like, I do negative five. If I do minus 10 in Lightroom for my vignette in the post effect or the after effect drop down menu, FX, I, yeah. feel, I feel dirty. He does. I do and he is dirty. Five. He's a dirty, dirty boy. Here we go. 
Um, can we go back to the other one though? Because that, that was the, I, I love what you're doing with the lighting here. Two suggestions, I'm a big lighting guy. I wanna make things look natural. I would get CTO gels here. Notice how the side of his face, the rim light from the sunset is warmer than the rest of the light. This is warm. A CTO this gel is, is basically a, a clear piece of plastic tinted orange to warm up the, the color temperature of your lights to match things. And then second, look at the ground, how distracting all the light spill on the ground is. This is where you would then aim the light up at the sky and let the bottom part of whatever modifier you're using feather or fall off yep. subtly on your subject. By aiming and it also, directly at him, it's also directly hitting the ground. Or use a grid. Also, it's kind of harsh lighting. Look at the shadows under his chin. Mm -hmm. You need to do something else to soften that. And I would just turn the power of the flash down. It's a little flashy. You know what it looks like? It looks like you use flash. It's not supposed to look like you use flash. And guys, you can get away with the harder look, but this is this is pretty tough. This is rough. Yeah. So I yeah, I think you might have bare speed lights here, honestly, if you look at the signature on the on the ground. So Invest in some bounce umbrellas or shoot through umbrellas just to spread the light a little bit. It'll, it'll soften it. Hey, Fran says she's heading to London in a few weeks. What you meant was swing in London in a few weeks. What's the best all-rounder lens I could be taking? I have an 18 to 200. Would that work for cityscapes and street photography? I love the 1800 for exactly that. So I, I love it because it's, it's wide, it's medium, it's a portrait lens, it's long, it's telephoto. Yeah, I think that's an awesome, awesome lens That'll work. Uh, for cityscape and street photography. If you just want to take one lens, and, and I think if you can just take one lens, you'll be better off for it. And now, that, that's crop sensor, right? Don't forget, Fran, you can find Dave, hybrid Dave, on any corner. Every corner. Every corner, he's there. All right, uh, any of these other shots you want to comment about? Um, that's all right. Too much flash. Too much flash. Yeah, Too again, try try flash. a larger modifier. Soften it up a little bit. And then um, the Dutch angle just worked it, for you in the, in the down. last one. Turn it down. Turn it just that that flash is look, looks like a it's a bright. one to one. Just you know, knock the power down. So the one before this, the Dutch angle worked. Um, this one, it just looks like you're drunk yeah. and yep. you're about to like fall off the dock. Yeah. Um, so straighten your horizons, guys. That's not doing you many favors. And there, also, you don't need it. quite so much headspace over here, unless you're thinking of putting like a, the name of a magazine up there. I like how you put his head in a cloud though, it separates him from the background, his so there's a positive in a cloud. And then uh, this is great, lose the vignette. I like how you're playing around with leading lines here. You could probably punch in a little closer and make this more about her and less about the location. Yeah, you're making it about the trees. Let's do this. Let's make a square. Let's press letter X to flip it that way. I think we could even do better than that. And let's, I guess if you really wanted to center it up, I kind of hate centering it up, but that's a much stronger shot all the way around. Yeah. And, and you're then still get getting rid of this crap there. up here. You got to get rid of this junk, which if only there was a tool that would get rid of horrible junk that sticks into your photos and ruins it. Man, Content Aware was the best thing Adobe has ever done. Yeah, it's, it's aware of your content. All right, so kind of like that. And cool. the lighting on her face is not like super awesome either. It's, it's split light. You can see the lights coming in from both the trees left and right. Um, a nice little fill, la fill flash would be, would go a long way here. A little fill flash. Where's your flash, man? We know you have it. Yeah, so on all the others you over flashed here, you decided now. Anyway, but you can make this, this shot a lot stronger and, uh, but, but not bad. I think really just, I think turning down your flash, you're a pretty good photographer. I think just turn down your flash, yeah. you'll, you'll kind of be, be in a better place. And straighten things out. This is a really great photographer who sent in such small thumbnails, we can barely see them. Um, We're gonna try. They're, look how pixelated they are. I'm sorry they're all pixelated, but that's what you sent us. These look like they were all shot at this, like a, like a fair or something. But I love the outfits. Looks like, a, you know, like they did face painting that day. Yeah. So I, what I like going on here is your crops. These are, these are all good crops. That's a nice shot right there. Yeah. They're just very small and so everything's pixelated because you so sent us like thumbnails. Yeah. So, I mean, these are absolutely great here. You're showing enough of the outfits and things, but you're not. Yeah, those are all really strong crops. Way to get their attention. Street photography, a lot of Strong people are too shy. Um, and you went out there and actually engaged them, it looks like, in those. You notice all of the women have the exact same pose and expression. Yeah. 
He's, he smells something bad. Let's, let's open these so we can see them larger. But he's got the I smell something bad look. Then he kind of, what's that smell? So processing here, this looks like you went into like a vintage filter and all the rest look normal. Um, so unless, Get rid of that one. Unless you're trying to make this look like a photo of your grandfather, like a throwback or like a restoration photo, I would get rid of this. I would just get rid of that photo. Um, I mean, it looks like a bad stock photo for a... <laughs> it's a bad stock photo for a thing. Maybe we change the crop up a little bit if it's for... You know what, though? I Great know job what... of not getting the, the glare in the glasses, though. That's I think what thing. they're trying to do is show that this is a nurse. So they're trying to keep the stethoscope in there. But it's a bad crop. Yeah. You did okay on the top. It's, it's, I think it's actually maybe a tad tight, but... Yeah. Like, you, if you weren't trying to show it was a nurse, I think you have a good shot here. Kind of going in something, well, maybe a little tighter than that. But now it just looks like she's wearing, you know, I don't know what around her neck. Yeah. You lose the nursiness. And then, what happened here? Mm, we got flat. There's so much lighting going on. We don't really have any direction. So yeah. see that that cheek closest to us. Throw some shadow on that short lighter. It'll thin her face a little bit. It'll make her look three dimensional. I shouldn't be seeing so much neck and chest and there's a lot of like neck and there's, chest, there's yeah. a lot of neck and chest where we yeah. want face. So you can kind of fix this by dodging and burning down the neck and chest, but you could really fix it by having lighting ratios. Here it seems like all the light intensity is the same intensity. Yeah. Whereas you should have one light be brighter and one light be dimmer, and that's your key and your fill light that creates that highlight and shadow. Um, there's really no depth to this picture because it looks like you set up a bunch of lights and they're all at the same power setting. So you, I, you can see I, I did a very fast and very poor job of it, but oh, I was hope, hoping to erase that. <laughs> Sorry. And, you know, I think that's what happened with the other one too. You're flat lighting too much. It looks like you got your hands on some lights and you got a good grasp of how them to all use up. them. And you're just setting them all to the same power. You want shadow. Shadow's not a bad thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Here it looks like the brim of the hat forced you to add some shadow to her, so that, that worked. Again, all, all your all your crops just feel a little too tight. I, I just yeah. I'm uncomfortable. Yep, I, I would have to uh, have to go with you on that. I think we're down to our last one, Eric. The pose seems contrived. Very. She looks like she's in pain. Bad crop, too, in the hair. Bad crop She's unsure hair. of you. She's unsure of, of getting her picture taken. Yeah, she a lot looks of people, uncomfortable. Yeah, people come to you, and we're problem solvers, and one of the biggest ones is getting people to feel comfortable in front of our lenses. That's good. She's comfortable with you. She's confident. That's, that's the best expression out of them so far. Absolutely. I'd still crop that a little better. Painfully tight crop. I just feel uncomfortable when things yeah. get this cropped. All right, so this one actually could use a tighter crop. I think a little bit tighter. I think you'd have a better, better shot there. I might have gone a little too tight there. All right, but whoa, why is little it, too tight? Why is it zooming in? I hate bridge. All right, this one desperately needs a crop. This one could be a good shot with a little more crop. What but it's aspect not, ratio is it's, that? I don't know. I have no idea. It's not going to help though. The overall problem. That's a better, a lot better crop, mm -hmm. but it's not going to help the overall situation that she looks very uncomfortable. And I would, I would burn down this. This seems like a lighting test shot. Like this is the beginning of the photo shoot, where ideally, at five minutes from now, you would have won her confidence and made her comfortable in front of the lens. This is not an uncommon shot, but it's just like, hey, I'm just going to test my light. This is our first photo or two. You haven't broken the ice yet. You're not. They're not at ease. They're not feeling comfortable. All right, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a tip. I have a tip for you. I'm going to go to camera two on this tip. Watch me. Here we go. Hi. How are you? I have a tip for you. This is going to help. So do this. You start shooting. You're shooting the woman here. When you've shot for about five minutes, stop and say, you know what? Let's just take a break for a second. Let me kind of make sure that my lighting's okay. Look at the photos. Here's what I would have found with her. You know what? When she smiles, you don't want to see her teeth. She doesn't have very good teeth. So I know this because I'm looking at the photo and I can see when you come back and reconvene for your next round, 
you're going to say, you're never going to say, give me a big smile. Give me a big smile. You're going to go, give me just a hint of a smile. Give me just a little bit, just a little bit of, oh, there we go. And you're going to find that spot that looks flattering to her. She's not giving you a big smile because she knows her teeth look like that. And she's hesitant to give you a big toothy smile. But you're shooting her smile like that. Five minutes into the shoot, stop and evaluate what you've seen so far. There's no sense in you spending the next 30 minutes shooting a bunch of shots that you know are going straight in the trash because she has a bad smile. Now, it, it may be too big of a smile. It may be a gummy smile. It may be they look great with a smile and they don't look good serious. I shot someone who just did not look good serious. Like every time they were serious, it looked awkward and weird. So here's the thing evaluate about five minutes into the shoot because then you can adjust how you're directing the subject. Instead of saying, give me a big smile, give me a little smile, it makes a big difference. Now I'm going back to the main camera. Here, you can watch. It's the magic of video. Thank you, Meredith, for switching so eloquently. Anyway, that was my tip. It, it really, it will save you both a lot of time because there's nothing worse to go back and see 50 photos and you're like, oh, she's smiling. Oh, you can see your teeth. Oh, it's not good. Why have any of those shots? Once the first five minutes are over, you should not, you should stop and correct for the things that you know look bad on your subject. Don't have them, if they put up their hand and their hand looks bad, don't ever ask them to put their hands up again. And if they put their hand up, say, ooh, I wanna see your whole face, can you just move that? Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, portrait photography, guys, it, in the end, it's problem solving. So if you get the lighting down, that's not the end of the story. Now it's no, just the beginning. That's the beginning. Hey, that's it. That's it. Boom. Woo. That's it. And we're only 13 minutes over, which is a miracle for us. All right, a couple of things. We got, we got a, new, a new class coming out tomorrow. Got a new class coming out tomorrow. All right, so I got a class tomorrow on beauty headshots. We, we saw some people doing clamshell lighting and stuff like that mm -hmm. today. So um, a class comes out tomorrow on Kelby One. Every Thursday is new class day. We come up with a new class every single week. This one's on lighting. And some retouching. I do, I kind of take the images, do some retouching. I do the kind of whole nine yards. So if you're into lighting or you want to get into lighting, catch it at Kelby One tomorrow. I'll have it on my blog and stuff like that. Um, now, what else? Was there anything else? Yes. New class. You're going to want to uh, enter the contest. So go to kelbyone.com slash webcast dash contest. That's webcast dash contest. Go to the submission form. And just tell us, <clears throat> pardon me, which one of the books you'd like to win? Would you like to win <clears throat> Portrait Photography from Snapshots to Great Shots by Eric? Or Shooting, shooting in, in bleep, beep, Light. Bad Light. Also by Eric. And, um, those, and also Lindsay Adler was his co-author. Mm -hmm. So uh, drop us those and we'll let you know. One last thing. Not this week. Is it next week? No. The week after, at the end of this month, I'm in Seattle and I'm in Portland. I'm in Seattle, Washington, and then a few days later in Portland, I'm doing my Shoot Like a Pro Part 2. We'd love to have you come out. Go to KelbyOneLive.com, get your tickets, and I'll hang out with you for a full day of love in Seattle and Portland, the 21st, I believe, and the 24th, something like that. It's, it's on the interwebs. two weeks from now on a Tuesday. Something like that. A couple last comments. Uh, BLT Sarge says, great job. Love this. I'll be watching again. Thank you. Yay. And also said, love you, Scott. So many great ideas and tips. Thank you very much. Uh, Hybrid Dave says, you could see into Mexico with that lens. And then Dave Clayton says, when I stand next to Eric, I feel like the before photo. Everyone who stands next to Eric always feels like the before photo. Uh, Sky Cloud Photography, awesome sauce, great live feed. Thanks. Hey, thanks for awesome. all. I want to welcome all of the uh, the the new uh, people that are watching today. We love new people. Uh, where can people learn more about you? Now, we already know about your Instagram page. If you're joining us late, mm -hmm. go to Instagram.com slash Eric V Photo. And uh, EricValen.com is the best place to find me. You can find my books there. You can see what I'm shooting. Um, Full-time commercial shooter, too, so you can... You can kind of see the work that I'm putting out there to to sell me and to to get new work, 
And then um, I'm also going to come back and do another class here at Kelby. So reach out to me through my website or reach on their out. social media channels and let me know what you'd like to hear. I mean, we've got classes on business and lifestyle photography. Um, but after looking at my work, if there's a question you have or a technique you'd like to learn, uh, give us that feedback because I would love to come back and put together a new Kelby One class for you guys. Yes, he would. And so would we. All right. So, uh, Fat Cat Photo says, can't wait to submit photos for the next one. Good. We didn't scare you away. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, I thought we were kind of okay today because sometimes we get carried away. That's nice. I thought yeah. today we, we were, were constructive. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we were destructive. Anyway, you said destructive, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to all our sponsors. Special thanks to Square Pay Square Space. One of our awesome sponsors. Thank you very much for sponsoring us. Go check squarespace.com. If you don't have a website, that's where to go and get one. My, oh, yeah. My oh, yeah. Squarespace. My website, Squarespace. There we go. Everybody's worse Squarespace. Thank you, guys. Thanks to our crew here in the studio. Thanks, Jen, for moderating the comments. Juan for amply running multiple cameras. And to Meredith in the booth. We thank you all from here in beautiful Florida. See you guys next week. Our guest is Rick Salmon. See you there. Take care. Rick Simmons on guest next week.